Well, that sure looks like something Mad Max would put together, huh? Back before his time. So the axle is definitely locked up. The brake drums are locked up. The engine has, looks like a mouse nest in the front of it. And then sometimes you put a tarp over something, it actually makes things worse. And that's kind of probably what happened with this. And it did a lot of corrosion, but everything is pretty simple on it. Straightforward and mechanical. I think we'll have a, a good time trying to resurrect it. So without further ado, why don't we see we get that hood off of there. We'll start looking into the engine and getting that shroud off and getting the critters out of it and see if we got spark and all that kind of good stuff. Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on this homemade tractor built in the 60s. Last episode, we dragged it out from underneath the house. It's at, I don't know, my guess is 15 years or so, at least. Stuck down inside there. And although we tried to get her to fire up and run, we had no spark is where we left off. Engine seems like it spins okay. Didn't have any issues with that. It just had this funky coil set up on it right there. And we went through every possibility to try to get around it and have it be cured, but it wasn't having it. A bunch of tar was dripping down below the magnets down here from the, uh, the packing that was around the coil. And then when we buzzed it out, it was open. And at one point we got it to kind of show good resistance going across the windings and out the other side, but that didn't uh, last very long. And it the whole time never had any spark. Well, since then, I got a replacement coil for it. Hopefully it's the right one. You got to punch out the core from the other one and install it in this. So without further ado, let's start getting into it. See if we can get this thing to run. She has a couple of funky clips on here. I'll hold it on. It was so rusty when I first took it apart. You couldn't even tell it was two separate pieces. Unless you just lift right up out of there. The magnets holding it. And the blue wire. To the bench. So we can mark it so we know which way. I guess we're going to call this the right side. And I don't know about we put it in the press. It doesn't look like it's going to come out of there all that easy. Might have to even cut all that stuff off of there. Let's make sure that that's even going to fit. Looks like it's a little on the larger side, doesn't it? I'm not sure that's going to be the, there it goes. Is it stepped? Is one side larger than the other? Yeah, I think it's just some flashing on the end of this right here. All right, let's go over to press. See if you can go tap that out of there. Let's go just try beating on it in the vise first. You should move for us. Did it move? I think it just did in the last one. There it goes. Bending over the end. I didn't want to do that. Let's drive her home. Probably gonna have to get down inside there with a brass rod or something. Clean that up on a wire wheel.
that's tight. I don't know if I want to put any lube on there or not. I'll go for a little green. I don't think it's going to hurt it, right? I just don't want to split this casing open, trying to knock it down. So you could draw that in slower with the vise. Hope it's the right way. <laughs> you push that amount of plastic out of there, that's not good. Not sure where that came from. Hopefully it did not cut into any kind of windings. We'll find out. I'm gonna go center that a little bit more too. Fed that through the sheet metal, and then we'll put that end on there. It's got a little stabber in the middle. It just crushes down on the wire, and then you fold it over. I think that crushed it. Yeah. Make sure it stands up. It's gotta. It's gotta pierce it. I still have a jumper wire going around to the points. I don't have the one that was built into it, but hopefully we get something. Oh yeah. <laughs> First crack I saw. Nice. Get you in there. Yeehaw. You know what that means, don't you? Go get some gas. I'm willing to bet that carb is a mess and we still need to go deal with that, but we're going to do a little bit of fuel down the plug hole and hopefully be able to get the fire with the drill. I still have to make a, a one way clutch up for drills. So that once it starts, it can free spiel, free spin. Unfortunately, I don't have it right yet. See what we get. See if she'll go. I don't think the drill's gonna do it. <laughs> the drill doesn't have enough snot to get it up over the hill. That is where. Good old electric drills come in handy. Let's give that a shot. You go from a bit adapter, three eighths to half inch, half inch to three quarter to a deep socket. It's going the wrong way. I don't know if that's that's fast. That's slow. Let's see if this will do it. I'm not breaking my wrist. <laughs> and it spun all the nut and everything right off too. It fired right off. Nice. All right, let's keep going. All right, next we got to get that carb off. We're going to go look and see what's going on inside there. The fuel was shut off, I think, on the gas tank. Whether it had fuel in the carb or not is going to be anyone's guess, but hopefully it comes out clean. But we got to go kind of go through it anyway. I want to make sure that's uh, good to go. So let's get, we got one, two there. It might be one underneath. On a tab and then just the throttle linkage that comes up to it on the other side yeah that should be kind of like bouncy like a spring seems like it's just gonna stay wherever you put it for rpm yeah looking back in there I move the throttle you see it's like a bunch of looks like it's got it rubbing up against the bolt it's gonna get this crap out of the way yeah that's that shouldn't be rubbing on there. That should be a straight shot up and down with no drag. 
to work the governor. I have a feeling this probably had a spring on it. A little tab, and this is an adjustment for the governor. I guess we'll worry about that when we get it apart. Yeah. I don't know if somebody put that bend in. It kind of looks like a factory bend, though, right? A little kick in that it does. Yeah, let's get the carb off. Gotta take the fuel line off. The linkage is gonna fight us. Which one's gonna be easier to work around? If we can get the turn up sideways, we can get the linkage off. It was on the furthermost hole all the way out on the bottom, remember that. Go to the bench. Let's see what we get. I'm thinking that linkage was on backwards. Uh, when I'm looking at it, you know how it had that offset in it? The offset is supposed to go the other direction and clear that bolt. We'll find out when we put it back the other, but I bet you it wasn't running very well that way. It was probably just maintaining one RPM and it never raised or lowered the throttle. So this one probably goes all the way through and needs to come out. Hold on a minute. All right, where were we? So rudely interrupted. So I believe this one has a, it's a, it'll be inside here. This is just the air fuel mix for the main. And it's got some crap around it. And then we get a longer one that's in there. Let's see what we got for screwdrivers that'll fit. And that one kind of goes through the center of it. That's that's the brass kind of breaking away. There we go. She needs some lube. A little tweaking on the the Craftsman. I don't think they have a warranty anymore, do they? Actually, no. Didn't didn't somebody take over? So Lowe's took over the Craftsman tool line. It might be still warrantying it. There we go. Get one that fits all the way across. And has some lube for the sides. There's a joke there. Now, however this looks when it comes out. Because this goes right through the, the bowl chamber. It's all cruddy looking. Then we'll know that. Not too bad. Alright. Let's go get, get rid of that one. There's a mosquito in here. We're just getting into spring, finally. Oh, the weather's getting nice. You hear outside, you hear motorcycles going by. There's one right there. Up here in New England, you hit 50 degrees. <laughs> it's riding weather again. Everybody gets, especially in the springtime. You go down to Florida, it's 50 degrees, no one's out. Almost no one. But around here, convertibles, everybody's <laughs> all pent up from the, the winter. All right, hopefully, this is not too bad. We're going to soak it either way, but let's go give her a, who's your daddy? Don't forget, is it? Nope. There she goes. We're going to have to kill the gasket. The gasket has a port, the float ball. Right there. And, um. It looks like it's broke around it. I don't think I have one. Let me go get a, 
a thin little blade. Let's go try it with a screwdriver. I'll stick like a putty knife around there, get it to break free from one of the sides. We'll just leave it stay with the other side. It looks like. Yeah, we can grab a putty knife. We'll try the hook. Where was it stuck? We want it to go with the top, correct? Yeah. Because I can't get around. That one. I can't get the knife into where the... That jet is. That passage, rather. here could you make one yeah there you go and not bad awesome hopefully the float is good we're gonna go throw that in there and see if it floats let's get the pin out of it it's tapped in we gotta tap it out not bad though. Do we, did we save the gasket? Which port is it? It's this one right here. Comes in. No. That's fine. Some of them they have a the passage, like say this line coming in, it comes in a different spot, runs through a passage. And then into the carb. This one does not use that. I do believe no fuel is going through there. Good. Let's go tap that pin out of there. We might be able to get that gasket off once that pin is out and we can soak the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, somebody's definitely been in here before us because some of that stuff just looks too good a shape. The gaskets. Damn it. And your tool's just a little too big. Grow up. We're almost there. Yeah. That's been replaced. That is not a a 60 year old setup that my punch won't go all the way through. Get the pin all the way up. I'm gonna grab it with a pair of pliers and give it a little. Not gonna worry about that one. That one's easy. To the pool. Everybody in. And we'll set her for. Let's go. Half hour. 50 is good. Oh, buzz away. Hey, right, well, that's doing its thing. We could probably jump on something else. We have, we got a brake that's frozen. And no brakes, all the brakes have to be gone through. We could probably, wouldn't hurt to change the oil. I don't know. Maybe we'll run it a little bit and then we'll change the oil. It'll splash up all the crap that's in it and settled in the bottom. You know, wash it. Tranny fluid. Mass is on the brakes. Steering looks like it's all functional. 
chain needs lube. The belt we'll look into. We'll run that. That seems like it's fine. We should probably take a, a wire wheel. What's the deal with that? That's the pedal. It's the tightens and loosens the belt with the pedal for go and no go. Yeah, let's go take a wire wheel and we'll clean the crap out of these. Knock the rust off of them. And should probably check the gearbox, see if there's anything in it. In the rear. I think it's all one. You think it floats from one to the other or two separate chambers? I'm not sure. I could move that throttle cable, but nothing here moves. Let's, uh, we can free up that pivot. It's either just rusted up or we may have cranked it down because that throttle was wacky. Like I said, that, that linkage was rubbing right up against the bolt. I think it was on backwards. So, it may, have, it may be to, having governor issues. If it's got governor issues, then we're just going to make it a gas pedal. <laughs> Run it like a car, you know? I should probably take that off and hit it on the wire wheel too. So the rod was on the, all the way out and the spring is on the second to the last one out. You can remember that for me? Good job. Let's see if we get this whole thing out of here. Take it on a wire. We'll clean up a little pivot points. I see another cable right there. I'm moving. It's moving on the other end, but it's the it's the springiness of it. That's no good. Check on pull. Yeah, she's locked right up. It's got. I don't know if that's a nut that goes on that springy cable. You know what I mean? It, I guess it maybe uses it as threads. But I'm going to leave that there. I think we could just take the screw out right here. I think it's a, a straight through. There's no end on it. And that's the case. We should be able to put vice grips on this side. Kind of tap down, pull it out. We'll clean it up with a wire wheel and shoot some lube through. See if we can get that cable to recover. If not, we'll go find something else. See, I should be able to pull that lever right up off of it. There we go. Yeah, it's a straight shot. All right, let's go. Give it a tug. So essentially, it's just a big wound piece of wire spring in the cable. And I'm just going to throw some oil on the outside of it. And some of it may soak right through. Just to kind of help. I don't know how rusty it is in there. So it'll just kind of help it. Usually it's on a sharp bend is where they get it locked up. That right at the very ends. All right. Now let's get some pliers on it. I see you can get it. We can get a good shot with the hammer. It's just pulling away. Let me spin it too. So I know it's free up to here. It's up in here. Up in here. Up in here. Let me get you there. I'm bending it. The cable's bending up to here and then it's twisting the body. Let's give her a little. Pull that right out of there. Oh. 
There it goes. Camera. Definitely pretty dry. Right there is where it was. See a little rust on it. So it was towards the very top. Right, let's go clean that up. See if we can get that to do its thing again. I can hear an air gun just blowing crap that's in the line out. I didn't see anything uh, massive coming out of there. Get some, uh, I don't know, what do you want to use for. What do I got? Yeah, penetrating lithium grease. You can go get some of that to feed through the cable. This can's kind of beat though. You should take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that went far, huh? Let's go try the other one. Like it's a big spring, so it can if there's any stretch in the spring anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I think our best bet is to lube the cable that we're putting in. And we'll throw some lube on the outside because the outside becomes the inside. Plus, it keeps it from rusting. So many jokes. I cleaned that cable up, whatever I did with it. Here it is. Let's go do the same for this. Actually, let me just goober up my fingers. We'll see how well that goes back. I think we need the punch grips. See so if we can get it. Put it backwards. <laughs> Come on, last little bit. There you go. Yay! So judging by the way this is set up, it has threads on the end of this rod here. It looks like it was a snow blower. Could have been a tiller also. But I had a throttle you just set at one RPM. It's kind of common on those older older rototiller uh snow blowers. So we want I said second hole in, right? Second little hole in. Grow up. That's our pivot. That should have a shoulder on there. Let's go see what happens. Should have a shoulder on it that it doesn't lock up, you know? I think it might be bissing. Bissing. It might be missing a bushing. Yeah, because that's just going to crank right down on it. Get slop enough for a bushing? No. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a punch and whack the threads <laughs> so they have a little bit of drag on them. And I'll just tighten the bolt up to where you can have a little bit of free play. Cause that's just going to loosen up for it, on us if I just leave it like that. I don't want to put Loctite in it. Yeah, let's put a, a little love tap. Let's see how this works. Won't go in it at all. <laughs> That was a piece of wire wheel. Did not put it in the hole. I was pre premature on my insertion. The top rod is not. There we go. 
And I should hook it to the thr throttle cable too. <laughs> ah, screwed up. Give me some room. Let's soak that carb a little bit more. We're gonna, it's already been uh, 30 minutes. I'm gonna reset it. It just clicked off. And maybe we'll get some uh, kerosene and a brush and we'll clean this crap off of it best we can. I'm not looking to restore. I'm looking to rust store. I don't wanna paint anything. I wanna get everything mechanically working again. Just run it with the looks that it has. I kinda like it. Yeah, let's go do that. We'll go clean that stuff out. I blew it out a little bit more, and then we'll try putting, putting, putting all the old wiring back together and the original condenser. This is an aftermarket one I threw on there just to test last time. We'll put all that stuff back together and we'll see if we still have spark. If not, we'll change out components accordingly. Get that buttoned up. Bath time first, though. This is just kerosene in a spray bottle. Just kind of pre-soak things. About 45 minutes worth. Let's see what we got. It's looking pretty good. Go rinse that with some water. Blow them out. Was the float still floating? Soup's done. I blew everything out. It's compressed air. Let's go look. Chuck myself a Q-tip. Seat for the needle so the fuel comes in and turns on and off. Good polish on it. It doesn't look beat up at all. No corrosion on it. It's in, yeah, I think the last time I went to see ran, somebody did the carb on it. So <laughs> it's only 15 years old instead of 60. All clear. All right, do we have to have the gasket on? I think we do. Before the. And I'm just going to piece it back together how it fell apart. So the majority is on. Yeah. 
Which sure it's this way or flipped over the other way. You think I'd see that bar across the gasket, right? It is like that. Yes. Normally you put a drill bit under there, a certain size, and it tells you the, the gap that you set the float to it. It actually looks pretty good. I always, I always just kind of go with straight across when it's flipped over. I'm going to blow in it, and then flip it over, and it's working. I don't think we have anything else inside this, do we? A little broken piece we're going to, a little broken piece we're going to piece back. Keep the fuel in the best we can. They could have used their turn on the wire wheel. I put all the old parts back on for the charging system. Let's go spin her over. Make sure we still got it. Well, yes, we do. <laughs> I'm gonna go check. If I still have the old plug. That's just some generic plug I grabbed. I don't know. Don't know what the rating is supposed to be for it. Somewhere I got the original plug. Maybe we'll go try that too and make sure it still does its thing. Yeah, that old coil really bled out. It's got a big hunk of tar down sitting on the flywheel. I don't know, like, did the engine run real hot? And then, because it had to be like parked when it happened. And, you know, if it was spitting out tar while it was running, it'd be all over the place, not just in one spot. So it had to be while it was stopped, this happened. Who knows? It's been just a hot day. <laughs> Alright. I think we can get that back on there after I do a rinse. Yeah, that's definitely what it was. I flipped that rod around. Now it goes around that bolt. And we got a spring loaded. It's got a governor inside that as it revs up, it takes throttle away. And you can influence that by how much cable you pull on the spring that's over here and that's the throttle cable that goes up. So you're essentially forcing more throttle on it and then as it gets up to its RPM, it'll it'll back off a little bit. So, you know, this is 2,800 RPMs with the cable pulled all the way up and then you let it relax and go the other way. As soon as it runs, the governor goes back down and the, the throttle goes back to its, its idle post. When it revs up, it just pushes that lever right down and then you can go back to idle. Get that flywheel on there. What else? Anything else? Get a gas tank, but I think we're good as far as trying to run off the carb. Yeah, let's get that flywheel on there. I got the uh, flywheel and the fan shroud everything buttoned back up. Let's give her, try with rope start first, you can get it. You still have to dial on that carb too, so who knows. It may take a little bit to prime itself too. I 
morning. Give me a cough. I got the choke on. And I do see gas dripping out of it. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I think the float's stuck. We got a gravity feed tank. Right over there feeding it. Let me uh, give her a couple of taps on the bowl. See if we can get it to settle down. Idle mix, and that's my main. So I had an idle, I adjust that one, grabbed it up, I adjusted that one. That's a good old thumper. Fine tune that a little. It'll fall on its face. Right about there. That's where you want to be dialed in. That and back a hair a little bit. Nice. Just cuts right along. Hopefully that float will seal itself. If not, you gotta go back in. Grab her up. Sometimes a little bit more on the rich side kind of helps. That's a thumper though, huh? I get a little bit more RPM. It's gonna die on me. And sometimes it takes a second, especially on idle, for it to respond. So you gotta turn it and just kind of see what it does. The air cleaner's not on it too. That's gonna make a difference. But for now. We'll take a rip. Shut it off. There we go. And we'll go give it a sec. We'll see if that carb does. See if it keeps leaking. We know that gas gets on crap on top. We had a couple of cracks in it. But the fuel level should only be about this high. It shouldn't be up above that. It should be down right about right about there. So it shouldn't be overflowing, just sitting still. Let's see what happens. It's about 10 minutes later. I need to run the fans, get the smoke to clear out of here. Yeah, she's a tad smoky. That's all right. I don't seem to be leaking any more gas anymore. That's good. Fuel is still hooked up to it. Just needed a couple love taps on that float. The, the uh, needle and seat to seat a little better. That's where I was cleaning up the Q-tip to try to help that. But apparently it's a uh, need a little bit of love. We'll see. Keep an eye on it. Worst case, we'll grab a carb kit for that. Probably should get one for the you know the broken gasket anyway. All right. So I think on this one, we're pretty much going to go sign off for now. I think we'll pick up 
from here we'll get into the brakes the mass cylinder stuck see how the transmission is drain all the fluids out of it i think we get that stuff done we will be an operating tractor so i'm happy for that get her hood back on her put her around see how she does see how she pulls but that'll be for another day, not today. With that, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for hanging out with me, wrenching and making smoke and fire and flame and all that kind of happy stuff. And hopefully we'll do it again on the next one. <laughs> all right, guys. Till then, I'll see you. Bye. All right, one more time. <laughs> see how she does. Choke off. See if she'll just go right over. Keep going. <laughs> Gotta give her a little bit of throttle. Seemed a little undecided there for a second. Yeah, I think it's taking the brake shoes with it. So you can get it uh... Something move. Something <laughs> you see the rust falling out of it? <laughs> I wonder why it wouldn't turn.